Hi everyone, this is Gina. And I'm Oleg. This video is part two, and in this one we'll cover bedrooms, where magic happens, and decor briefly. Once again, let's figure out where the focal point is. For bedrooms, the focal point is typically your headboard, where it's the opposite wall. And there are usually three ways of arranging your bedroom. First, the small and narrow bedroom. I understand a lot of people wanted to push their bed against the wall to create more space on the other side. However, let's try to add a nice stand between your wall and the bed, so you get a better flow in the room. On the other side of the bed, you can add a dresser or a vanity. Next, the standard size master bedroom. Now this one is much easier as you can do a typical symmetrical layout, where you can center the bed and add nightstands on each side. On the opposite wall, you can add a double dresser or a bench at the foot of the bed. To make the space even more stand out, you can consider adding a rug underneath the bed. Trust me, it will really refine the space and also keep your feet warm. Mm -hmm. Last one, the actual large master suite. First, let us congratulate on getting the actual large <laughs> master suite. So this layout will be similar to the last example, mm -hmm. but this time you get all the extra space. Now there are several things you can play around with, uh, for example, if you have extra space at the end of the bed, what some people do is they have like a small lounge mm -hmm. with a couple of love seats and even a coffee table. If you have space on the side of the bed, what people tend to do is create a small little office or a reading nook or even a bar. One point we must stress is not to fit a king-sized bed where is isn't space for one. Truth is, more often than not, with king-sized beds in Toronto condos, you won't have space for anything else, yeah. even nightstands. A great tip for us to improve on the space is to step back and take a photo. This usually helps us see the flaws that we tend to ignore in our daily lives. And then this way you can draw on the photo afterwards to mm -hmm. see how you can better arrange the space. Now onto decor. Decor should be the last thing you focus on because it's like jewelry for interior decorating. Mm -hmm. It's not necessary but it will finish the look. Mm -hmm. Decor is where you can have fun and introducing rich color, textures, finish to the space wow and, factors. and wall factors, yes. Mm -hmm. But it's also important not to overdo it as clutter often becomes an issue. Textiles such as drapes, pillows, throws and rugs can soften the space and create depth. Wall art can bring interest in seemingly empty rooms and even lamps can bring detail and necessary verticality. When using wood or metal, it's good to keep consistent mm -hmm. and then use the similar or complementary finishes. When you're out shopping for decor, it's mm -hmm. good to have photos of the space you're working with as a reference for color and scale. Another neat trick you can try is matching paint samples to the items you have to work with with the items you want to buy. So this way you can see if it works before you make the purchase. Mm -hmm. Summary, creating visual balance is the key to design every room. And don't overfill the room, keep it open flow. Start with what you need, but don't settle on something that is easy without considering the potential of every room. So this is the end of our video. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to subscribe and like our video. And let us know what's the most important decoration piece in your home. See, See you next time. time.